Today on the podcast, I have a lovely lady by the name of Isabel Squires, who represents the charity Theodora. And they do very special work, and that is they bring the arts into hospital environments where children are very sick. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, Sylvia. It's great to be here. Great to talk about our work at Theodora Children's Charity. Thanks. Yeah, so it's it's amazing because like everyone knows someone who's had somebody sick in hospital and especially these days. And when it comes to kids, especially, it's particularly heart wrenching. So you're the coordinator of this particular charity. So can you just introduce what the charity is about and the kind of work that it does? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so our name is Theodora Children's Charity and we were founded in memory of a wonderful lady called Theodora by her two sons, Jan and Andre. Uh, so they actually live in Switzerland um, and they originally founded a charity in Switzerland and then it really took off there. So they founded uh, Theodora's in different countries around uh, Europe and actually we also have a branch in Hong Kong. Kong, amazingly. So we're an independent UK charity, but we have this strong connection to Switzerland and to quite a few other countries as well. And um, our main program is called the Giggle Doctor program. And Giggle Doctors are all professional performers by background. Lots of them are musicians. Some of them have a background as magicians or uh, actors, all kinds of performing backgrounds. Um, and they come to us and go through two years of training to become a giggle doctor. And then, as you said, they go into hospital to visit children uh, who are really sick, uh, having a really, often a really boring time and also totally. quite a painful time, mm. you know, really, really challenging experience. Hospital can be quite a scary place for anyone, let alone for a child. So yeah. um, we go in to bring them a little bit of joy. And sometimes that takes the form of lots of raucous fun and laughter. And sometimes it's really just a listening ear and a chance for a child to um, have some time with an adult who has no expectations of them. You know, we often say, actually, the giggle doctor is the only person that the child can tell to leave and say no to. So that's a kind of really special part of what we do. So we're so mostly you, in hospitals, but yeah. we also work in children's hospices and specialist care centres, and we work online as well. So we can kind of reach those children who are maybe in isolation because of mm. their infection risk or something like that. So they can have a virtual visit mm. um, from a giggle doctor. I'm yeah. sure there's some children there that look forward to that so much. And you said there that there's a two year training program. What does that look yeah. like? So if you would say somebody who is an advanced musician and they want to get into this style of work because it sounds amazingly full of purpose. What is the two year training schedule like? Yeah, good question. Um, and one that actually I think we maybe don't talk about enough because as you say, often people come in with very high levels of skill and we do have that um, with all of our artists. They're all, all people who are really at the top of their game in the other work that they're doing mm. as well. Um, so the purpose of the two year training is really to contextualize that artistic work within the hospital environment in a way that's safe. Um, and safety really has to be kind of paramount in, in everything that we're doing. Um, because of course, the, these children who we're working with are facing so many other risks at the time mm. that, that they meet a giggle doctor. So the training's kind of split into two halves. One half is going into the hospital with the more experienced giggle doctors and working alongside them, giving it a go, practicing, um, practicing kind of improvising in different situations. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, even if you're say a street performer and lots of our artists are people who you know do busking or have done lots yeah. of performances on the streets, mm -hmm. they still, it's a different kind of improvisation when you go into a hospital and you're dealing with you know, perhaps parents whose emotions are really high, as well as children who might be not in a good frame of mind as well. Mm -hmm. So there's that practical in the hospital side. And then I guess what you might think of as a bit more kind of like classroom training that's outside of the hospital. Mm -hmm. And that covers all kinds of stuff, um, which you might not necessarily have covered um, as a musician or as a performing artist in your training and your, your development. So lots yeah. of things like safeguarding, which might have come up, um, but also things about child development and what you can expect working with a child who is perhaps two months old all the way through to an 18 year old because we do work with the full spectrum okay. um, and then lots about um, hospital hygiene and infection control <laughs> which is absolutely essential, essential to what these we days do. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and it kind of sounds quite boring but actually you know it's 
having a good understanding of those kinds of things, which means that then we can form really good relationships with hospitals when the giggle doctors are there and they can have the freedom to, to move around the hospitals and work with children in different areas. And that's that's what makes it, you know, a really good addition to what the hospitals themselves can offer already. And do you cover like I presume it sounds like there's a lot of psychology involved here so that you're you know the musician or whatever the artist is able to really clearly read what's going on and respond appropriately so it sounds that's part of your training yeah definitely I think that's you've hit the nail on the head there there's a lot of kind of reading situations mm -hmm. and um, in fact one of our giggle doctors Dr Bungie he was in the Guardian a few weeks ago um, talking about what it's like to be a giggle doctor yeah. and I think he expressed it really well he talked about how when you go into a room and you see a child and their parents there before you even think about opening your mouth or singing or strumming your guitar or saying anything you're reading the room you're reading the parent and what their body language is saying you're reading the child and that's you know it's not just are they asleep or not it's you know can I come all the way into the room or actually if I stay at the doorway and say hello you know might I get through the the mm -hmm. ice layer that, that yeah. you know maybe mum or yeah. dad's put up you know lots of very justified kind of defense that that adults yeah. want to put in place to protect their children and there's just such an enormous amount of of kind of yeah preparation and I think it is quite psychological a lot of it and, and they all the giggle doctors do have to be really confident communicators and people readers yes um, yeah. just very aware in their, in their very presence let alone in the way that they they kind of then go forward and interact or play with a child it sounds like that that it's very suitable for a very certain type of personality that automatically feels compassion and empathy in such situations that will be yes. an ideal personality to have in so yeah. when we look at the criteria um i know there's many musicians out there i was just speaking to one earlier today trying to find ways of giving back or helping or assisting through their yeah. artistry whether with that singing songwriting drama dance you know it can cover many things so what is the primary level of criteria that you look for in somebody i guess I think it comes back to what you just said about having someone who has the empathetic connection as mm -hmm. well as the kind of practical and artistic skills that go along with that. So, and then I think to add to that kind of empathy, it, you also need to be quite resilient because of course, when you go into hospital and, and you see children who are really sick, it can be quite distressing. And um, I certainly find, I don't have children myself, and, and I certainly find that I've started to think about children as being unwell because that's how I think about children all the time. So I think that's another important part of, of working as a giggle doctor is actually being able to have the resilience to kind of um, set some of the feelings that you might have from your work aside. And we do provide support, um, I should say, for, yeah. for giggle doctors because of course, sometimes they, they can witness really distressing things in hospital or develop a, a long-term relationship with a child who's mm. there for a long time and that you know if that child then passes away that can be really distressing for them of course yeah so debriefing um, and yeah so I think it, it, it's a real yeah it's a combination of kind of confident artistry that mm -hmm. can be um, adapted and and someone probably with strong improvisational skills as well and we do lots mm -hmm. of training on improv actually um, both not necessarily just musically but also kind of in in terms of drama and improv because yeah. that's so useful um to be able to just adapt to every situation um mm -hmm. and have a whole range of things that you can call on um yeah so so, 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 so we'll say you've got a giggle doctor they've gone through the two-year training i mean what type of work level or how many hours a week or mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know how how busy do they get from one week to the next yeah well, right now, because of COVID, that's a tricky question to answer. <laughs> so before COVID, <laughs> let's start there because that's a bit easier. <laughs> OK, um, OK. Be before COVID, when everything was kind of running as normal, if you like, mm. we had um, lots of giggle doctors who were working. Um, we usually would 
would say don't do more than about three shifts a week and a shift is usually four hours long okay. so kind of th three four hour shifts and that's really just because of the the kind of emotional weight of the work mm -hmm. uh, you really need to have some time to recover and you also need to be doing other work so that you kind of um, have a range of experiences you know you're not just in that one kind of clinical environment all the time okay. mm -hmm. um, so we've got now kind of coming out of covid um, we've got some artists who've got up to that number of shifts again so during the pandemic we weren't able to visit any hospitals in person at all um, and that was the case for about a year from March 2020 through until about just after March 2021 um, and now we're back so we we have 22 hospital partners across the country and we're back in nine of them so that oh, gives you an great. indication of, yeah. of kind of We've made a lot of progress in the last year, but there are still hospitals where, um, you know, restrictions are really tight uh, for yeah. very understandable reasons. Yeah. Um, so that means that not not all of our giggle doctors are working at the moment and not all of them are working a lot. As it but it, it sounds um, like that it's yeah. it's a type of a task that an artist could take on as a part time uh, yes. way of giving back in a sense if they really feel led to that kind of work. What kind of impact or feedback have you got from parents and even children alike that have been in tough situations in hospital? Yeah, well, the feedback that we have is generally that meeting a giggle doctor really reduces a child's kind of anxiety and stress about the, the, the moment that they're in. Yeah. Um, and that can lead to them being more playful uh, and kind of more exuberant and that's obviously kind of what we want to get back to because that's really what a child is helps in the, our mind yeah and helps the healing um, process I'd imagine yeah yeah and can have uh yeah exactly an impact on them their medical healing process and help to speed that up um and for some it's more about kind of like a calming effect um mm -hmm. and just you know a child who's maybe in, in quite a state of distress either because of a, a procedure they have to go through sometimes you know something like having a cannula put in that's a quite uncomfortable process that an adult is able to kind of dissociate from for a child can be very distressing mm -hmm. and actually you know the interaction with the giggle doctor perhaps it's before or or after or you know they get to show it to them maybe and that that kind of thing yeah can really um be very calming and and yeah kind of improve their experience reassuring um, overall yeah yeah and i think you know in addition to those kind of very direct impacts on the child there's also uh, the kind of reverberations out so you get the parents or you know maybe it's grandma whoever it is who's who's with the child at the time um kind of they get to see the child in a different uh context Stage. within the hospital and that's mm -hmm. really really important i think and and often the parent will say something to the giggle doctor like that's the first time that i've seen my child smile this week oh, or so since important. we've been in hospital yeah, yeah. and yeah. sometimes it's uh in fact one of our another of our giggle doctors dr easy peasy was telling me about a little girl that they saw last week who um didn't say very much this little girl the whole time that that dr easy pizza was in the room they kind of they played and they ha had some games and the little girl didn't say very much at all and as dr easy peasy was leaving the mum said she never talks to anybody that's the first time she said anything to an oh, adult while she's amazing. been in here so it's yeah. those yeah those little interactions those changes that might seem quite small if you just saw them as an outsider but for the parent or the adult who's who's caring for the child in the hospital they see those kind of those bigger changes um so, and of course that that leads to a, a more positive atmosphere for everyone being yeah and i'd imagine like it, it just has yeah. this ripple effect in the environment where like this little corner is being livened up as it were and suddenly yeah. it kind of spreads out you know yeah, within yeah. that said environment so you're running a charity or you're part of a charity and i know that for most charities the story is oh we need funding yeah yeah so what way Definitely. can people help i mean what is the best way that people can help to support such a charity because you're doing fantastic work yeah well i mean we've we've got our website you've already mentioned the web address for that and if you just google us as well theodora children's charity or google giggle doctors you'll find us as well um and you can make a donation if you feel able or, or willing to through our website but also um for us it's, it's about spreading the message and trying to reach the people for whom this is a really valid cause um or who we can help as well so following us on social media our handle is at give a giggle 
sharing our posts, sharing our accounts, um, so that uh, other people find out about our work and we can yeah. we can kind of spread the message. And also our virtual work, our virtual visits, and we also do what we call gigglograms, which are pre-recorded little videos for children. Um, those are free for anyone to book. So um, if anybody who's listening has, you know, knows a child who's perhaps not very well at the moment, whether they're in hospital or maybe they're at home recovering, anything like that, um, then you can book. You can just go onto our website and you'll see on the virtual visits page, there's a link to book for free for them to kind of meet a giggle doctor. So that's another way in which you know, we're really trying to promote our message and and, and for those artists, for those artists who want to reach out to you to find out yes. more, per, perhaps, you know, do the two year training and move ahead into that kind yeah. of thing part time. Who do they reach out to? Is it yourself? So or... it, it is me. Yeah. And the, the best way to do that is if you go on our website, we've got a contact form. Um, so if you put a message in there addressed to Isabel, it'll it'll come into my inbox. And then um, I'm always more than happy to have um, kind of conversations with individuals about the work and what's involved and what the training is like. Okay. Um, usually when we recruit new Giggle Doctors because of the training, we tend to do it in a little cohort. So right now we're not recruiting for a new cohort, but anybody who's interested, if you get in touch, I can put you on the list. Yeah. And then when okay. we are recruiting, I can kind of let everyone know that you know applications are open as it were okay um, because, okay yeah. okay you've seen a lot and you've been in the hospital environment and what has created the most impact in your own life through this work because you've seen a lot i mean you've seen children suffer you've seen how this whole charity can improve an environment like what has the, had had the most impact in your life well experience? i think that what music always comes back to and what what is really at the heart of giggle doctoring as well is a human connection and a sense of of community built and it can be a tiny community between two people or it can be you know a larger community my my background uh, my kind of how i came to music was through orchestral playing as a child so for me when i started this job music meant sitting in a huge group of people and being part of of this huge collective yeah but actually what i've seen when i came into this job is that music and giggle doctoring in general can be a connection between just one or two people but that that can change a whole wider community it's like that kind of um drop in a in a pool that spreads and spreads yeah the ripple spreads. spreading out one, yeah. yeah one moment mm. a few minutes um, one little song can can have this kind of huge yeah. effect yeah. and yeah if I can give one uh, really nice example of this I went to visit some giggle doctors who were working at the Royal Alexandra Children's Hospital in Brighton mm -hmm. okay. and the day I was visiting there was loads of kids had chicken pox just happened oh. to be <laughs> and <laughs> and um, they went in hospital because they had chicken pox that was just something that was going around the hospital unfortunately oh, no. Um, and so when a, a child has an infectious um, condition like chickenpox, the giggle doctors can't go into the room with them because obviously then the, there'd be a risk of them spreading yes, that around yeah. the rest of the hospital. But there was one little girl who had just um, had, I think she'd had um, some kind of little procedure. I can't remember what it was, but something on her hand that was really sore and she'd been really upset about it. And uh, we spoke to the play specialists um, and to the nurses on the ward and they said, oh, this little girl, she's got chicken pox, but she would absolutely love to see you. And so we just went to the door of her room and uh, there was a little bit of kind of hide and seek and peekaboo around the door. She was probably about four or five years old. And then um, Dr. Jihi started singing her version of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, which had all the words you know mixed up and muddled and, and gone wrong and of course children like nothing more than to be able to tell an adult that they've got it all wrong and so Dr G he said well why don't you sing it for us and we just we stood there in this corridor with the little child at the door uh, with her mum and there were two giggle doctors and myself you know all these adults and this tiny child just sang twinkle twinkle little star to us all and it was just the most Sweet moving moment, moment of the day yeah. <laughs> and you could just feel you know for her she she started this interaction quite upset still quite grisly and mm -hmm. here she was singing to us all and we were all just captivated of course <laughs> 
Um, and I mean, so that will last, last, yeah, that will last in the memory of the mom and, and even Absolutely, the child yeah. themselves. I mean, that's a special moment for sure. Yeah. What is the number one growth tip you've discovered through all of this? Because like psychologically, you're seeing a lot. The mm. artists are doing amazing work. And like, how do you grow as a person through this? What have you seen or witnessed? Yeah, I think that's that's an interesting question and quite a tricky one as well. Um, and I think probably really it's it's about kind of hope and humanity and the, and the idea that even in the worst moments, actually, there is a lot of hope or you can find hope and you can find a way to experience kind of joy in that in that moment. Um, and I think, yeah, that a hospital environment can feel quite clinical and quite sterile um, and when when a giggle doctor walks into a room and a child goes from lying stationary on their bed staring at the TV to jumping around, shaking their rattle, you know, it really, yeah, it, it's a message of hope that even a child who seems really, really sick, there is still a child inside them. And, and But I would also say, free. not to, yeah, but you're illustrating this whole idea of maintaining hope, but also not giving up hope. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the... The, in a way, the role of the giggle doctor is is to be the person who hasn't given up hope. Um, yes, you know, at, at a, sometimes, yeah. not always, but but they kind of come in come in with that, um, mm. and no one is beyond hope for them. Everybody yeah. is, yeah, yeah. Is, and is and what <laughs> have you, you know, through your work, you're the coordinator, so you're seeing a lot. You're overseeing a lot, okay. Mm -hmm. And what have you uncovered through your work that you've really been impacted by yourself? Hmm, that's really tricky because I spend so much of my time kind of uh, thinking about putting all the puzzle pieces together, uh, kind of to connect our giggle doctors with the children in the hospitals that that yeah that's a tricky question for me to step back and say what 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 is it for me. Um, I guess it, it, it's kind of similar really it's that I the idea of. Um, that we can we can bring something bigger than ourselves mm -hmm. to to that hospital environment and yeah. i can't fix any of those problems and i can't make those diseases mm -hmm. go away but actually i can use the skills that i have and the knowledge that i have to do something to make it better and yeah, it I means so that's, much. That's, it, doesn't that yeah. mean so much? It's that very you meaningful. Have, <laughs> it, it is really meaningful. It is so full of purpose in a sense because like think of the stresses and the tensions and you're just, yeah. you have that impact to go in there and just take a bit of relief in there and just plant it in there. Yeah. It's, the most, it's beautiful. It's the most beautiful thing. And what is the best tool that you choose to use in your life uh, with this whole charity that holds you together? And maybe your giggle doctors. Yeah, I think that the key thing, and, and this is not a physical tool, but rather an abstract one, is is to communicate with each other and crucially to listen to each other. And I would say that our giggle doctors are so good at that when they go and work with the children. They, you know, it's probably a job that is 85% listening and reading and watching and only 15% sort of putting things out there as it were. Yeah. And I think that um, certainly I try to emulate that in the way that I then work with the giggle doctors because I think it kind of, that, that reverberates out. And if we all listen more, I was just going together. to say that if we all <laughs> listen more, that would make a big yeah. difference, wouldn't it? And that is, a I lot mean, clearer. Yeah. And that's a that's a, a good lesson for any musician as well, isn't it? You know, it's, it's all about listening. <laughs> now, you mentioned that you have a background in music. And what's your own story with music that you play in an orchestra and all that? Yeah, well, I mean, I was very lucky to grow up in a household uh, where music was everywhere. Um, yeah. I was I started playing the violin when I was four years old. So I did oh a lot goodness. of a lot of orchestral playing growing up and also lots of um, choral singing um, because I grew up near near one of the big cathedrals um, mm -hmm. in Gloucestershire. So 
uh, yeah, had a lot of music growing up and that left me with a lot of connections as I kind of went through university um, and got involved with music there as well. And actually now I don't do kind of do a lot of music <laughs> myself, but I still feel very connected to that world. Yeah. And I think it's um, having experienced kind of music in that way really helps me in my work to understand why it's important and how it can be important for the giggle it's doctors amazing. and for the children it's amazing yeah. the whole world of music how that when you take it into different areas of society how it can create such release and and it, it can just create such calm or if you wanted to do it the opposite create excitement etc it's it's yeah. just an amazing form of artistry it is so much in it yeah so, you know what i mean and across this barriers of feeling and emotion and language and it, yeah. it really holds a lot within it well it's a pleasure to have you on and to learn of the theodora children's charity and all the links will be in the description below if you're watching this on youtube or if you're listening to this via audio spotify app podcast whatever it's a wonderful charity now so where can people reach out to you you just said the website is the easiest there's contact forms there absolutely the website is the simplest the way, way. Um, or you can always drop, a, drop us a direct message on, um, you know, Instagram or Facebook or Twitter as well. Uh, we're also on LinkedIn. So, um, yeah, any of those. And we're a really small team. There are five of us in the office. So your message won't go astray to, to someone, you know, in a huge, it's a huge unknown team. It will place. always make it way, its way back to the right person. So, fantastic, yeah. <laughs> fantastic. Well, and, you know, if people wanted to do a fundraiser to raise yeah. funds, I mean, do you encourage that as well? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, we've got a big campaign coming up um, towards the end of September. So definitely keep an eye out for the details of that. And yeah, we really welcome anybody who'd like to do a fundraiser anytime, whether it's, you know, a sponsored walk or, a, you know, a dinner or anything like that. So get in touch and, and we can provide some more details and see how we could support people with that. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for coming on. It's been great to learn of your work. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us.